Okay, this is question three from October 2022. Uh, as you can see, it's a particle on an inclined plane. And one of the keys with these sorts of questions then is drawing a nice big diagram to be able to try and explain where all your forces are. Let's do that first of all. So we've got alpha in here. We've got my particle P there. So I'm gonna start putting some forces on. I know particle will always have a weight acting down and it says it's two kilograms. So that's gonna be two G. It will always have a reaction force perpendicular to the plane. In this case, we've got a horizontal force. That's not horizontal. Got a horizontal force here. Let's tie up the diagram. Which is X Newtons. And let's, it's a rough plane, so I've got friction. I'm gonna talk about this in a little bit more detail, but let's just put friction on as acting in that direction. I'm gonna talk about that in a second. So once I've got my forces on, um, I then need to resolve them all parallel and perpendicular to the plane. That's why I'm going to do this question. So this should be absolutely standard for anybody um, doing the applied course that if that's alpha, that angle is 90 minus alpha, which means that angle there is alpha again. I'm not going to spend any time on that. If you need that, you'll need to go back and look at a different video uh, on where we get that from, which then means... 2G is going to be broken into 2G cos alpha in that direction and 2G sine alpha in that direction. Now I've also got to do the same thing with my X force there. And again, I'm going to use a standard idea that if we've got this diagram, always very similar these diagrams, there's a Z angle in there, there's an alternate angle, which means that this angle here is going to be alpha when I'm doing parallel and perpendicular to the plane as being those two. Just a quick chat about these arrows here. If my force is going in that direction, then obviously this one's got to be going down and then up like that in order to have the arrows going in those directions. And again, I'm not taking too long over the fact that this one is X sine alpha. And now this is where having a good diagram and that being X cos alpha there, I can fit everything in, everything looks pretty good to me um, with regards to what we've got there. Now this is one of the questions where rather than telling me alpha, they tell me up here that tan alpha equals three quarters. And again, there's a nice quick shortcut to this. So when I do these questions, I'm not spending ages doing this. If tan alpha equals three quarters, then that means we've got the three, four, five triangle. So I know sine alpha and cos alpha straight away are three fifths and four fifths. Go away and do that separately again if you're struggling with that part of it. Right, so let's talk about this friction bit and it says, let's actually look at part A when I'm doing this. It says, show that when X equals 14.7, there's no frictional force acting on P. So I've got two ways I could do this. <coughs> I could assume that friction is equal to naught and show that X is equal to 14.7, or I could take X as being equal to 14.7 and try and show that friction is equal to naught. Well, I'm gonna show that, fric uh, sorry, I'm gonna assume that friction is equals to naught, which means I don't now need to worry, oops, about which direction that's gonna be in because it's gonna be zero anyway when I'm doing it. Okay, so if I wanna resolve parallel to the plane. Before I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna assume F is equal to naught and show that X is equal to 14.7. So if F is equal to naught and I'm resolving parallel to the plane, what forces have I got? Just those two. Okay, so that makes it a little bit easier. I'm just gonna get F equals MA, leaving me with 2G sine alpha 
is equal to x cos alpha. And we know what sine alpha and cos alpha are. We've been given those before as three fifths and four fifths. So that's six g over five is equal to four x over five. So x works out to be three g over two and three g over two is 14.7. Okay, so first part done slightly different to the way that we do normal ones, but okay, that, that, that's fine. That's just got that bit done. Now when I'm going to be doing part B, what does part B say? So part B now says coefficient of friction between P and the plane is 0 0.5. So let's put that on. Coefficient of friction is equal to 0 0.5. And what I've got to do then is go through the whole question again I would start, I always tend to start with resolving parallel to the plane. So I'm going to resolve parallel to the plane. Look at my question here, and now this is a clever little bit here. If they want to find the smallest value of x for the smallest value of x, I now need to change my diagram and actually have that friction is going to be acting up the plane because the smallest value of x means that I'm just about holding P where it is, which means that if it was going to move, it would move down the plane. So if it was going to move, it would move down the plane. Friction opposes motion. So I've now got these ones for my directions of my forces when I'm going to be doing F equals MA parallel to the plane. Really, really key. Go back and rewind the video if you need to for that bit there. So what that's going to give me then is resolve parallel to the plane, F equals MA. I've got the F and X cos alpha are acting in the same direction, balancing out with 2G sine alpha. There is actually no motion, it's just on the point of moving. Um, once I've done that, let's do resolve perpendicular to the plane. I'd normally do this to start off with on other questions, but I just wanted to tidy up that bit there with the thought process behind it. So resolving perpendicular to the plane, let's get rid of these off of here, which is obviously these ones now. Again, keep the diagram there if you want to go back to look at the diagram um, when we're doing that, but resolving perpendicular to the plane I'm going to get the R is, sorry, F equals MA. I will do F equals MA first. Just tell the examiner what I'm doing. F equals MA, but they're in equilibrium. So R is equal to 2G cos alpha plus X sine alpha. Let's put my coses and my sines in and tidy all that up. So that's 8G over 5 plus 3X over 5. So that's R. If I do F equals mu R now, F is just equal to 0 0.5 times by this thing. So F is going to be equal to, if I want to just tidy this all up, this is just going to help me out with my algebra in a bit. I'm going to call that 8 plus, sorry, 8G plus 3X all over 10. Half times a 5 and 5 makes the, the 10 there. So I've got F equals mu R there, which gives me F equals that. This thing now can go in there and we should be able to get whatever we need from that, but let's actually go ahead and do it. So I've got F, let's see, keep it on the screen. I've got F plus X cos alpha there. So that's going to be 8G plus 3X all over 10 plus X cos alpha equals 2g sine alpha and now let's put in our sine alpha and our cos alpha we're quite close to the answer now so we get 8g plus 3x over 10 plus uh that's four fifths x just be careful when you're doing all these things keep jumping backwards and forwards to make sure you're getting the right um fractions that we're not making any silly calculating errors here Tidying this all up is going to give me the answer. I'll just do it quickly. So I've got 8G over 10. That's really 4G over 5. 3X over 10. <coughs> 4 fifth X is equal to 6G over 5. So if you take those over to both sides, I'm going to do it quickly. 
I get 11x over 10 on one side, there's 2g over 5 on the other side, which means that x works out to be 4g over 11. No problem with doing that sort of thing. You notice I've left g in my answer all the way through there. There could be another question another time where they ask for the exact value or they ask you to prove it's equal to 4g over 11. But if you'd wanted to, you could have put all your values in. That works out to be 3.56 newtons. Hopefully try not to get caught out with the fact it should be two significant figures um, because we've done G's as 9.8. But yep, that's how you do that question. Hopefully that all makes sense.